Hi guys! Salamat sa inyong patuloy na pagsubaybay dito sa ating ginagawang discussions about statics of rigid bodies. Ang ating topic ngayon ay tungkol sa frictions, guys. Ano? At isimula natin ang discussions sa pamagitan ng okay, pag-discuss sa mga basic concepts about friction. At sa bandang huli ay magpapakita tayo ng sample problem kung saan ay pakikita natin kung paano gamitin ang friction sa pag-solve ng problem. Simulan natin ang discussion natin sa pamagitan ng definition kung ano ba ang friction. Pag sinabi natin friction, tumutukoy siya sa contact resistance that is exerted by a body o yung tinatawag yung first body. Kung saan, when another body or we call it as the second body moves or tend to move past the first body. So, paano natin makikilala? Kinakailangan makilala natin, meron tayong dalawang bodies that are in contact. Kung ang isang body will be moving or will have a tendency to move past the other body, then the second body will be exerting a resistance. And that is what we call friction. Okay. So makatwid, itong friction ay tinatawag din nating retarding force that acts opposite the direction of the motion or tendency to move the body. So yung tinatawag din retarding force, ano? Pumipigil, ano? Pumipigil that acts in the opposite direction of the motion. O kahit wala pang motion, kahit tendency to move pa lamang ng isang body. And primarily, nag exist ang friction kapag, magas, kapag hindi siya smooth, ano? Because of the roughness of the contact surfaces. Kaya nga, kung matatandaan natin doon sa ating naunang discussions, kapag ang surface ay smooth, ang ibig sabihin nun, walang friction. So when the surface becomes rough, then there exists actually a friction. Para ipakita natin itong uh, konsepto ng friction, ano? Imagine natin na meron tayong first body. First body, ano? At sa ibabaw nito, meron tayong second body. If the second body shall be acted by a force that will cause the second body to move against the first or to cause tendency to move against the first, then friction is developed. So, I will show you an illustration of how this is shown. Okay? So, tingnan natin, ano? Okay, nakita niyo no? Okay, kung yung second body ay na ng force, applied force, pinakita nito, di ba? At nagkaroon ng motion. Ito yung direction ng tinatawag motion. So, makatwid, itong first body na ito is exerting a frictional force. Okay, upon the second body. Why? Because thus, the surface between the two is rough. Okay? So, ganun natin pinakikita ang friction. Okay? So, sabi nga, friction daw is an asset and a liability. Okay? Bakit sinabi natin asset? Sometimes kasi, it is, they are essential for various holdings and fastening devices. Kapag ginagamit niyan sa pag-hold, ba? Okay? Sa pag-fasten ng mga devices, for friction drives, sa mga brakes, at sa iba pa. Kaya tinatawag natin ang friction ay asset. So, example natin, napakita natin dito. Okay, okay you will see here a, person, a man okay, that is to cross, who is to cross a street. Kung sakaling walang break itong sasakyan nito, definitely may hit siya. No? And because of the application of friction in stopping a car, okay, doon natin nakikita ang advantage ng friction. Okay, halimbawa rin ito, no? Okay, meron tang isang person who is to climb up a ladder. Imagine natin kung walang friction between the wall and the ladder. And the ladder and the floor. So, ibig sabihin, may tendency na bumagsak itong ating tao. Ano? So, doon natin makikita yung application ng friction. Okay, friction is also a liability. Ibig sabihin, there are disadvantages of friction. They are liability when it causes losses of power and wearing of parts as in machine. Kapag ang friction ay nagkakos ng loss of power, o kaya nagkakos ng wearing of parts as in machine, okay, then that's the time that we consider friction as a liability. 
Yun yung tinatawag natin disadvantages of friction. Let me give you an example. Ano? Imagine the person here eh, trying to pull a piece of block. If because of friction here, because of the block under the block and the wall, uh, the floor, eh, nahihirapan siya itulak or ipasok itong block sa loob nun. And that, that's the time that we consider friction as a liability. Furthermore, imagine niyo meron dahil sa sakyan dito. No? So, anong nangyari sa sakyan? Nagkaroon ng overheating. Why? Because of friction between the parts of the machine. Ito yung tinatawag natin, wearing of parts as in the machine. So, if because of friction, okay, that becomes a liability. Okay? So, ituloy natin sa theory of friction. <clears throat> Magbigay tayo ng halimbawa, no? sabi dito, let a block of weight W rest on a rough horizontal surface and assume that a horizontal force P to be applied on the block. So, meron tayo daw ditong okay, block that rests on a horizontal surface and the block weights W. Okay? So, when P is 0, may na-plan daw ng force, ano? Kapag daw yung P is 0, then the block is in equilibrium. And the frictional force, okay? The frictional force or resistance force is also 0. Kapag walang, wala tayong force, okay? Kung may force, pero the magnitude is 0, sa mga weight, okay? Wala din nag exist ng frictional force. Kapag daw binigyan natin ng increasing value, yung P, but the value is insufficient to cause motion, okay? Wala pang hindi sapat, hindi sapat yung value ng P na mag-cause ng motion doon sa block, okay? Anong ibig sabihin yan? The frictional force resistance, F, increases correspondingly to maintain equilibrium. So, nagkakaroon ng value yung ating frictional force and they also increase correspondingly. At ang kanyang goal or purpose is to maintain equilibrium. And let me show it in the illustration. Ano? If I will be applying a force P and the P is not enough to cause black to move, ano ngayon nangyari? Nagkaroon ang ng F dito. Yun yung frictional force that is exerted by this rough surface upon the black. The purpose of this F, kaya nag siya, ay para ma-maintain yung equilibrium kasi wala, wala pa namang motion. Ang sabi nito, kapag pinalalaki natin o no, nag-increase natin yung value, anong nangyayari sa ating F? is also increases correspondingly. Diba? Also increases correspondingly. Let me show it. I increase the force and F also increase. I also increase the force, F also increase. Ano? In-increase ko yung force, F in increase. Kapag pinaliit ko, lumiliit din. Pinalaki ko, lalaki din. Pinaliit ko, liliit. Pag pinalaki, lalaki. Diba? At, mapasin ninyo, okay, time will come that when you increase the value of P, there is a maximum frictional force that is applied. Hindi forever yung F, ano? So, meron lamang siyang maximum value yung maximum value. At bakit nagkakaroon ng maximum value? Ito yun. Eventually, the block is on the verge of moving. And at this instant, F attains its maximum value. Okay, kapag ang block daw ay na sa uh, verge of moving, that is that means almost to move. Almost moving. And, and at that instant, yung F na ito is already at its maximum value. Diba? Ayun. Kung sakali, palakasin, palakihin pa natin yung value ng P. Sabi dito, a further increase in P then causes motion. But surprisingly, the value of F does not stay at its maximum value. <clears throat> Sabi dito, kung sakaling palakihin pa natin yung P and then P causes motion. Itong F max na nakita natin dito, okay, will not Winata will not stay at its maximum value, but it will decrease rapidly to a kinetic value, which remains fairly constant. And at that instant, yun yung tinatawag nating kinetic friction na nangyayari okay, in the surface. So, let me give you an example. Let me show the example here. Ano? So, subukan natin palakihin yung F, palakihin yung P. So, nagkaroon ng motion yung black. But, 
ito value ng max kanina kay surprisingly ano medyo bumaba ng konti at naging nag-stay siya at a certain value we call this as f sub k yun yung kinetic friction na okay na develop so ulitin ko lang uli para makita natin and try to observe what happens to this f na exert ng rough surface upon the block okay balik natin tingnan natin mabuti no umiikli nakita niyo yung tumbal nito umiikli no ulit natin umiikli siya kasi anong nangyari sa kanya Okay, the maximum value will not stay at that value. Yun lamang yung value kapag ang friction, kapag ang block is on the verge of moving. Kapag ito na yung mag-move na. But once the block moves, okay, the value of the friction will become the kinetic value. And somehow, this is somewhat smaller than the maximum static friction developed between the surface. Okay? Ito rin natin. Now, how do we define the magnitude of the maximum static friction? Yung pinakamalaking static friction pa natin nakikita na sosob yun. So, the magnitude of the maximum static friction that may be developed is proportional to the normal force. Ito yung konsepto na dapat nating maunawaan. Yung daw maximum frictional friction that may be developed is proportional to the normal force. Kaya kung ipapakita natin, ito, yun ba? ito yung kanyang representation that F representing the maximum ano, is that is proportional to the normal force. Kapag meron tayo proportionality symbol dito, kinakailangan natin mag-introduce ng proportionality constant. And we say that we introduce F and this F shall be called as the coefficient of static friction. So makatuwid itong ating statement neto ay magiging equation. And that equation becomes F equals F multiplied by N. Kasi yung ating with the introduction of this uh, uh, symbol will change this uh, statement proportionality symbol into an equation that becomes f equals a certain constant multiplied by n and that constant f is called as the coefficient of static friction hmm. ako saan dito ano itong f na ito? ito yung maximum static friction that may be developed yung f naman ito yung coefficient of friction at itong n is the normal force acting at the surface in contact when say normal, it should be perpendicular to the surface in contact between the two bodies. Now, when we say, uh, okay, in uh, most cases, ano, ma-encounter natin yung tinatawag natin angle of friction. Okay, ano ba yung tinatawag itong angle of friction? Ito yan, ipakita natin, ano? Okay, ang makikita natin sa figure dito, okay, ay isang body that is subjected, uh, that is subjected to a force P there is a weight W. And because of this P, there is a frictional force develop, And there is this what we call normal uh, force acting at the surface in contact. Kaya pinapakita do dito, it shows that F and N are the component. Makikita natin dito, ito daw F na ito, yung frictional force, ano? At itong normal force na nag-a-act dun sa surface, yun yung lumalabas na components of the total reaction. Ito yung, ito yung total reaction. Ito sa mga tuwid yung components itong total reaction that this of bloody is exerting upon this object. Now, the size of that angle, okay, itong angle to, that been between N and R, ito daw size ng angle to between N and R, it will depend on the value of the frictional resistance. Ay, de depende sa value ng frictional resistance nito. Kapag lumiliit itong F natin, Naturally, liliit ito itong angle that this R is making. As a matter of fact, kapag yung F is zero, that means this object is stationary. Okay, yung ating reaction, resultant force exerted by the floor will become vertical. And that's exactly the same as the normal force. Habang nagkakaroon, habang nagkakaroon ng F dito, itong ating reaction exerted by the, this body will increase its value, will be inclined with respect to normal at a certain value, lumalaki ito. Lumalaki itong value na ito. Diba? Ngayon, there is a particular value at this instant, at this angle, ano? The particular value of this angle, yun daw value itong angle na ito between N and R. Okay, when frictional resistance is maximum, kapag daw itong frictional resistance is maximum, is defined as the angle of, the angle of friction. Kapag daw ang F is already the maximum, then this angle between N and R is called the angle of friction. 
Tanong, itanong natin, kailan nga nangyayari na itong F nito ay maximum? Ang sagot dyan, kapag itong object nito is already on the verge of moving, it's already about to move. Diba? Sa mga katawid, kapag ang object is about to move, then that is the maximum. Then F is maximum. And the angle between N and R is, al is already at a certain maximum angle called the angle of friction. And that is defined as K phi. That's defined as phi. In the figure, tangent to phi is equal to F over N. Diba? So mga katawid, just kung balikan natin yung definition, ipinakita natin yung definition that F is equal to F multiplied by N. So mga katawid dito, yung F na tinatawag natin coefficient of friction shall be the ratio of F over N. But F over N is also equal to tangent, tangent of phi. And therefore, we say that tangent of phi shall be equal to F. Diba? So paano natin ito i-interpret? Paano ito ipaliliwanag? Ang paliwanag ganito, no? itong tangent of phi, it will represent the coefficient of friction between the two objects. And this phi okay, is the maximum angle when the object, one of the object is about to move. When this is subjected to a force equal to P. Yun. So, para maunawaan natin itong ating discussion about friction, siguro mas maganda ay magkaroon tayo ng sample problem. Itong sample problem nito ay kinuha ko sa isang libro ni Engineer Singer, ano? Mula doon sa problem 5.4, on page 162. At ganito yung statement ng problem. Sabi dito, A 200-pound block is in contact with a plane inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. Meron daw dito 200-pound 200 200-pound block and resting on a plane inclined at 30 degrees with the horizontal. Tuloy natin. A force P parallel to and acting up the plane is applied to the to the body. So there is a force P here na sinasabi ano that is directed parallel to the plane and acting up applied to the body. Ito 'yon. A force P. Okay. Tuloy natin yung problem. If the coefficient of fric static friction is 0.2 Meron daw dito yung static friction at ang kanyang coefficient is 0.2. At yung tanong, A. Find the value of P to just cause motion to impend up the plane. Ang ibig sabihin daw ito, ano daw itong value ng P na ito? Para daw itong object na ito will have an impending motion. It's already on the verge of moving but the motion is up the plane. Akyat siya pa pa ganyan. Bagamat wala pang motion pero tendency pa lang. Tendency ano? Tendency to move. Second question, find the value of P to just prevent the motion down the plane. Ito naman, ano? Eh, pipigilan naman itong P ang movement itong 200 pound block down the plane. So we are looking for the value of P that will prevent the motion of this down the plane. And let us see, if P is equal to 80 pounds, kung daw ito 80 pounds, determine the magnitude and direction of the friction force. Ano daw naman ang magiging direction? at magnitude ng friction force na madidevelop between this 200-pound block and the inclined plane. So, solve natin. Isa-isayin natin yan. Mag-start tayo with, okay, letter A. Yan. To find the value of P to just cause the motion up the plane. Okay? Tandaan natin, doon sa sinasabi, if P is to just cause motion up the plane, okay, take note ha, is to cause motion up the plane. Therefore, the frictional force that will be exerted by the plane upon the block must be directed downward as its purpose is to resist the motion of the block. Para ipakita natin yan, kunwari, kunwari gumalaw, bagamat wala namang paggalaw, kunwari gumalaw itong ating object. Ano ngayon mangyayari? Kunwari gumalaw yung object natin, nakita nyo biglang nagkaroon ng F dito, no? and the direction of F is downward because that purpose, okay, that uh, that the goal is to resist the motion of the block. Ito yung nangyari. May F na nag a dito. At tanong natin dito, okay, if it is on the verge of moving, tendency to move, what is the value of this P? Okay. So, para makita, okay, di-isolate natin yung, yung FBD ng block. Ito yung ating block. At ipakita natin yung lahat ng forces na mag a Meron tayo dito yung 200 pound, yung kanyang weight. Meron tayo dito yung force, yung applied force P. At makikita natin dito, no? maliban doon sa normal force na kay ini-exert ng, ng plane dito sa block, meron pa rin tayo ditong 
Okay, force, yung frictional force na nakita natin nag-appear when it is already applied. And this is on the verge of motion. The direction of this F is downward because as sabi nga sa problem, the, the block is on the verge, is it's about to move in the upward direction. But since it's about to move, wala naman talaga motion pa. Pinakita ko lang dito sa kanina para ipakita yung, kung ano yung magiging direction nitong F. Pero sa totoo lang, wala pa siyang motion. At dahil wala pa siyang motion, then the system of but the system is still in the state of equilibrium. And therefore, we can still apply the condition of equilibrium to solve all the other unknowns. And what are they? It read natin ano, that we consider these two axes as the x and the y axis. So that we can solve for and here by applying a condition of summation of force along the y. So that okay, we can solve for n by summing up forces along the y axis. And if we will use this direction as positive itong direction to pataas o pag ganyan is positive therefore what shall be our okay for summation i will have here the normal force representing this one and the component of this 200 in the y direction this 200 is making up 30 degrees with respect to the horizontal kasi itong plane is also 30 degrees kaya yung kanyang component in the y direction this one in this direct direction is 200 cosine of 30 degrees and that is supposed to be equal to zero. Kaya yung n natin, when computed, will be 173.2. Ito yun. Di ba? Ngayon, ang definition ng frictional force, ano? ito daw frictional force can be computed using the magnitude of this n and the coefficient of friction of 0.2. From the formula, sabi dito yung f is equal to the product of the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force if f and n are substituted with this value therefore that is 0.2 times 173.2 therefore yung frictional force na develop becomes 34.64 which is directed down the plane ito nga ipinakikita di ba kaya kapag na natin ito then we can already solve for this diba? by summing up forces okay along x equal to zero and if we are to, to consider that this direction is positive ito yung positive ano itong direction what will be our k for summation our for summation becomes p this one minus this f minus the component of this 200 in the x direction which is di directed also downward kasi ito yung maging direction niya and that must be equal to zero when we solve for when we substitute for the value of f, which is already computed here at 34.64, we can solve for the value of p. And that p will be equal to 134.64. Ang ibig sabihin nito, okay, kapag ang value ng pina ay naging 134.64, ang block will start to move. Wala pang motion. It will just start to move. Ang ibig sabihin doon, kapag higit na siya sa 134.64, then that's the time that the block will be moving in the upward direction. Diba? Okay. Puntahan natin second question. Sabi doon sa second question, find the value of P just to prevent motion down the plane. Baliktad naman ang mangyayari, no? Ipe-prevent naman ni P yung motion. Okay? Yung motion down the plane. Sabi nga dito, if P is just to prevent motion down the plane, then the frictional force that will be exerted by the plane upon the block is directed upward as it is to resist the motion of the block. Ito ngayon yan. Ano? Kunwari, eh, payagan natin yung mag-move downward yung block para makita natin yung direction ng frictional force that will be exerted by this plane upon the block. Ito pakita natin. Ayun. Nakita niyo, no? Nung bumab bumaba siya, nag nag, uh, nag karoon ng frictional force develop and the direction is okay tandaan natin direction nito is always directed opposite the direction of the motion wala siyang kinalaman kung ano man yung direction ng applied force ang tinutukoy nito yung motion ng object na kung saan siya ay mag -aak. since the motion of the object is downward therefore this one must be directed upward but still there is no motion yet ipinakita ko lang itong itong F Okay, pinag pinagalaw ko lang siya para makita natin yung direction ng F. Pero, ang totoo niyan, wala pa siyang motion. Therefore, the object is still, is still in a state of equilibrium. And therefore, if we're going to isolate the block as FBD, ganun din, ano? Pakita ulit natin dito. Okay, ano nga niya? May subjected sa force siya. Ito yung P. Ito yung frictional force at yung kanyang normal force. Take note, ha? 
that this f is already in the opposite direction now in here we are going to solve for n then we'll be getting the same value 173.2 therefore yung f is also 34.64 but this time it is directed up the plane and so if we're going to solve for the value of p by summing up forces along the x-axis therefore we shall have assuming that this direction is positive we shall have our equation so that p plus this one minus the component of this 200 in the downward direction and that is minus 200 sine of 30 and all of this shall be equal to zero if f shall be substituted with this value of 34.64 Therefore, P becomes 65.36. Ang ibig sabihin nito, when the value of P is already 65 point, still 65.36, mananatidi pa rin siyang stationary. Babagsak lang siya, gagalo lang siya kapag ito ay mas mababa na sa 65.36. Sa makatwid, kung ang value ng P ay between 63, 65.36 at 134.64 gaya ng nasub natin kanina, then the object will stay in equilibrium. Mananatili siya, no? So, gagalaw lang siya kapag lumagpas na siya sa 134 at mababa naman sa 65.36. Now, bakit ko na nabanggit yun? Kasi, do sa third question natin, na sinosolve natin if the value of p is 80 determine the magnitude and direction of the frictional force hindi nga ba't itong 80 is in between 65.36 at 134.64 sa bakatwid yung ating object will not be moving and if you are still in equilibrium and if you are to determine the magnitude of the frictional force therefore okay, all the forces that will be acting here must be the summation must be equal to zero. We know that this 200 will have a component in the downward direction of, of 100. Diba? So, mga katwid, for this to maintain, to be in equilibrium, the difference between this shall be the force. This will be balanced by a difference between the two. And that must be directed in the upward direction whose magnitude is 20. And this gives us the direction of the frictional force. Para, ma, para, para mag-maintain siya, ma-maintain siya na siya ay nasa equilibrium. And that gives you the solution to the third question. Yan guys ang application ng ating friction in solving problems in statics of rigid bodies. At sana ay nasundan ninyo yung ginawa nating discussion. Sana. At Sana guys ay tuloy-tuloy natin subaybayan itong ating discussion sa pamagitan ng pag-subscribe sa ating channel. At kung magagawa ninyo, i-share na din natin ito sa kanila para sa inyong mga friends para sila man ay ma-inform din of these uploads and my future uploads. Once again, thank you very much for watching.